This program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Hawke's Bay, a community access media station. Thank you to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible. Hi everyone, Gail here, life coaching with, with me. It's a kind of life coaching. I did counselling many years ago. I uh, got the certificates at the time, which was a very long time ago now, and everything's changed. But one thing that hasn't changed that I know that doesn't change is that life is life. Life goes on and we have life experiences and we can sure have some good ones and we can have some tough ones. Uh, essentially, we learn, we grow through our worries, fears and frustrations, heartbreaks, dramas. We grow and we mature. We perceive life slightly differently after every little thing that we go through and I feel that that's the gift. You know, if you remained the same way that you were in your 20s, if you looked at your life the same way you looked at life in your 20s, that in some ways would be brilliant, by the way, as we know, because you have hopes and you have dreams and you don't know about the pitfalls that are ahead of you in the world or what even is really out there in the world that's a problem or a pitfall. And I wonder if today, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in the older generation, but if the younger generation actually can see those pitfalls at all. And I get it. Sometimes it's better not to actually know there are consequences or that there are problems or that there are barriers. But sometimes you can save a lot of time and you can make less mistakes if you are aware of consequences, pitfalls, possible problems, possible outcomes of what your actions are. So if you do know those, it can be really, really helpful to avoid pain, heartache, distress, and all those things that we are, and stress, all those things that we have to deal with in our life. And for many of you, and we've said about this this year, now this year, and I will recap what I said at the beginning of the year, this year is a very promising, productive year. It is one of the most productive years that you will have the potential for, for several years more to come. And the reason I say that is because if you are looking to achieve something and you put in a little bit of effort, and I get it, I'm so tired sometimes, the last thing I want to hear is that I have to do something or put in effort or try hard or anything like that, I'm talking about just do a little thing, just do one step, just do one more step towards something. In actuality, you are not pushed for time. You do have time to do the things you need to do. However much time you have in your life, the things that are important to you, you have time to do those. You have. And we're not talking about, you know, becoming prime minister or um, acquiring, you know, a million dollars. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about what do you personally see as an achievement? What is something in your life that you have been looking to do or even looking to say um, or express that you haven't done yet or that you have could tweak a little bit or that you could maybe do in a slightly different way or come from a different angle. You, uh, this is the year to start putting your thinking cap on a little bit on knowing it's possible in some way you know, we don't have to conquer Mount Everest. We can go and climb a small hill and it could be the smallest gradient 
and we can still feel achieved with that depending on our capabilities. So your goals are your goals. Your goals are specific to your abilities, um, your needs, your physical capabilities, mental, your skills that you've acquired, skills you want to develop. It is the year this year that you can make this happen. And there is a magical element to this year. It's called the God element. Uh, call it the universe element. Call it the love element. Call it whatever you will. But if there is something you are striving for, something you are looking to acquire even a little in your life, find a way to do that. It is, there was this something that was said and it was said about if you want a new car, make as if you already have the money for that, If you, as if you are able to go and do it. So go to a car dealer, get in a car and ask for a test drive or even just to f be driven around to feel what it feels like. Give yourself the experience of having that feeling of that new car. Same thing for if you want to change your living experience. Go and do a couple of walkthroughs of homes that are for sale that you like because it gives you a feeling you would not have had before. That feeling could get you a little unstuck from where you are. That experience could actually feed your mind with ideas and uh, give you insights on, well, actually, if I did move somewhere, I'd like this to be a bit bigger. I'd like that to be a different shape. I'd like to have it that it has something like this in, in the premises. Even if you feel it is impossible for you to ever acquire any of those things, simply give yourself the experience of why not? Why not just go out and experience what it's like if you want to experience how the other half live? Go and have a look at a menu in a restaurant. Look at the food that they've got. In my experience in my life, I will tell you, some of the fanciest places that you could go is more about the ambience and it's more about the decoration and the um, way you can dress than it is around the food. Just through my experience, not everybody's and it's changed today, but in my early days when there was a meal out at a fancy restaurant and they were fancy restaurants, I learned very quickly to order a steak. The reason for that is most other dishes were so small and tiny, it wouldn't have filled a corner of my stomach. And I was a big eater. I did a lot of exercise as well, and I just loved my food. So I learned very quickly to order a steak in a fancy restaurant, because even if it was smaller than the steakhouse type of steak. It still was filling. And so, but give yourself the experience by looking at menus, looking and seeing, well, is that the food I really want to, to eat? And if it is, if you like uh, caviar and um, the fish eggs, by the way, um, but if you want things like that, um, Make sure you give yourself that experience. Look, these days you can buy these things. They're not, you know, it's just special for special people. Uh, pretty much everything is available. So this is the year to have new experiences, to think big. Think uh, outside the square. Like, take a big step in your life where I am here and this is where I want to be. And... It doesn't matter how much money that you have, you can always give yourself a new experience, a see what it's like. It doesn't have to always be an upper class experience. It can be a sideways. It can be a, 
a, a kind of like a trek. It can be a pilgrimage. It can be uh, something that is in itself elite, but is uh, different. So this is the year to make the magic happen in your life. The magic is in the way you feel, people. It is in the way you experience things. That is where your joy comes from. That is where happiness and that optimism can come from. It's through your feelings of what you experience and what experience you give yourself. So some, some of you might be risk takers. So have you ever been thinking about that bungee jump? Well, this is the year that it's most likely to be successful without failures. <laughs> so it is, uh, yeah, just doing more of those things. And we spend about an hour with each other this morning and Always there are things to talk about and things to discuss. This year, and you, and your life, are actually the most important. And because we're on Radio Hawke's Bay, this is a community radio. It is a radio that is for you. It is for topics about you that might be of interest to you. So I invite you to and encourage you to listen to all of the programs that are available on Radio Hawke's Bay, which is, again, your radio station. And I am Gail. I am a life coach. I am also a psychic, a tarot reader, clairvoyant artist, um, a, a whole medium, a whole lot of things. I am a lot of things. And because of that, I have always in my life found it quite difficult to have a focus direction if for want of another word so I focus my direction in line with my intuition my intuitive abilities which are psychic abilities which you have you have we all have those uh, we have uh, the ability to develop them and by paying attention to the hunches that you have to those little coincidences and synchronicities that are meant to be. By paying attention to those, you gain information and insight that your eyes and ears and mind, brain, don't actually give you. So I love that area. I love the exploration of our unseen side of ourself of the side we haven't been trained in because it gives you the freedom to in your own time and in your own way and with whatever appeals to you to become involved with it gives you that freedom to be able to learn and develop a curiosity, a skill, something that you know that maybe you have had happen for you in your life before, like maybe you do get strong hunches and so maybe you can develop that more. The first way you do that, of course, is to go, oh, that was a hunch, okay, I'll follow it up. I followed that hunch up and that was right. So that helps to develop the strength of your hunches to become more often and to become stronger. So uh, paying attention to if you also look at something and you see something completely different, when you look back, you go, oh no, that, that wasn't there, that was something, that's that. Well, how do I, why did I see that weird thing? It is because you were seeing it for a reason. Sometimes it's a face, to be honest, and sometimes it's not a face you would recognize. If it is a face you recognize, well, it definitely is your loved one. If it's a face you do not recognize, and you can see these anywhere, anywhere all the time, I do, all the time, carpet, walls, um, arrangements on, of anything, even, um, you know, pictures. If you're not looking at them, you see something else. Does it make sense? If you're not looking at something, you see something else. If you are in a mind fog, you will 
think you're imagining some things. If you've been through trauma and a really um, tough situation, you might think you're losing your mind. I can promise you, you are not. Uh, there is another world uh, parallel to this world. There are many, actually, worlds parallel to this world. This is the solidest. Therefore, it is the one that we see uh, pretty much constantly. Well, we do. We see it constantly. And there is an, another world that exists and other worlds that exist at the same time. It would be very, very confusing if we could see those other worlds all the time. And we would eventually perhaps be drawn into one of those other realities and lose the reality. This program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Hawke's Bay, a community access media station. Thank you to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible. Hi everyone, Gail here, live coaching with with me. It's a kind of life coaching. I did counselling many years ago. I uh, got the certificates at the time, which was a very long time ago now, and everything's changed. But one thing that hasn't changed that I know that doesn't change is that life is life. Life goes on and we have life experiences and we can sure have some good ones and we can have some tough ones. Uh, Essentially, we learn, we grow through our worries, fears and frustrations, heartbreaks, dramas. We grow and we mature. We perceive life slightly differently after every little thing that we go through. And I feel that that's the gift. You know, if you remained the same way that you were in your 20s, if you looked at your life the same way you looked at life in your 20s, that in some ways would be brilliant, by the way, as we know, because you have hopes and you have dreams and you don't know about the pitfalls that are ahead of you in the world or what even is really out there in the world that's a problem or a pitfall. And I wonder if today, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in the older generation, but if the younger generation actually can see those pitfalls at all, and I get it, sometimes it's better not to actually know there are consequences or that there are problems or that there are barriers. But sometimes you can save a lot of time and you can make less mistakes if you are aware of consequences pitfalls, possible problems, possible outcomes of what your actions are. So if you do know those, it can be really, really helpful to avoid pain, heartache, distress, and all those things that we are, and stress, all those things that we have to deal with in our life. And for many of you, and we've said about this this year, now this year, and I will recap what I said at the beginning of the year, this year is a very promising, productive year. It is one of the most productive years that you will have the potential for, for several years more to come. And the reason I say that is because if you are looking to achieve something, and you put in a little bit of effort, and I get it, I'm so tired sometimes, the last thing I want to hear is that I have to do something or put in effort or try hard or anything like that. I'm talking about just do a little thing, just do one step, just do one more step towards something. In actuality, you are not pushed for time. You do have time to do the things you need to do. However much time you have in your life, the things that are important to you, you have time to do those. You have. And we're not talking about 
you know, becoming prime minister or um, acquiring, you know, a million dollars. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about what do you personally see as an achievement? What is something in your life that you have been looking to do or even looking to say um, or express that you haven't done yet or that you have could tweak a little bit or that you could maybe do in a slightly different way or come from a different angle? You, uh, This is the year to start putting your thinking cap on a little bit on knowing it's possible in some way, you know. We don't have to conquer Mount Everest. We can go and climb a small hill and it could be the smallest gradient and we can still feel achieved with that depending on our capabilities. So your goals are your goals. Your goals are specific to your abilities, um, your needs, your physical capabilities, mental, your skills that you've acquired, skills you want to develop. It is the year this year that you can make this happen. And there is a magical element to this year. It's called the God element. Uh, call it the universe element, call it the love element, call it whatever you will. But if there is something you are striving for, something you are looking to acquire even a little in your life, find a way to do that. It is, there was this something that was said and it was said about if you want a new car, Make as if you already have the money for that, If you, as if you are able to go and do it. So go to a car dealer, get in a car, and ask for a test drive. Or even just to f be driven around to feel what it feels like. Give yourself the experience of having that feeling of that new car. Same thing for if you want to change your living experience. Go and do a couple of walkthroughs of homes that are for sale that you like because it gives you a feeling you would not have had before. That feeling could get you a little unstuck from where you are. That experience could actually feed your mind with ideas and uh, give you insights on, well, actually, if I did move somewhere, I'd like this to be a bit bigger. I'd like that to be a different shape. I'd like to have it that it has something like this in, in the premises. Even if you feel it is impossible for you to ever acquire any of those things, simply give yourself the experience of why not? Why not just go out and experience what it's like? If you want to experience how the other half live, go and have a look at a menu in a restaurant. Look at the food that they've got. In my experience in my life, I will tell you, some of the fanciest places that you could go is more about the ambience and it's more about the decoration and the... Um, way you can dress than it is around the food just through my experience not everybody's and it's changed today but in my early days when there was a meal out at a fancy restaurant and they were fancy restaurants I learned very quickly to order a steak the reason for that is most other dishes were so small and tiny, it wouldn't have filled a corner of my stomach. And I was a big eater. I did a lot of exercise as well, and I just loved my food. So I learned very quickly to order a steak in a fancy restaurant, because even if it was smaller than the steakhouse type of steak, it still was filling and so, but give yourself the experience by looking at menus. Looking and seeing, well, 
is that the food I really want to to eat? And if it is, if you like uh, caviar and um, the fish eggs, by the way, um, but if you want things like that, um, make sure you give yourself that experience. Look, these days you can buy these things. They're not, you know, it's just special for special people. Uh, pretty much everything is available. So this is the year to have new experiences, to think big, think uh, outside the square, like take a big step in your life where I am here and this is where I want to be. And it doesn't matter how much money that you have, you can always give yourself a new experience, uh, see what it's like, it doesn't have to always be an upper class experience. It can be a sideways. It can be a, a, a kind of like a trek. It can be a pilgrimage. It can be uh, something that is in itself elite, but is uh, different. So this is the year to make the magic happen in your life. The magic is in the way you feel, people. It is in the way you experience things. That is where your joy comes from. That is where happiness and that optimism can come from. It's through your feelings of what you experience and what experience you give yourself. So some, some of you might be risk takers. So have you ever been thinking about that bungee jump? Well, this is the year that it's most likely to be successful without failures. <laughs> So it is, uh, yeah, just doing more of those things. And we spend about an hour with each other this morning and always there are things to talk about and things to discuss. This year and you and your life are actually the most important. And... Because we're on Radio Hawke's Bay, this is a community radio. It is a radio that is for you. It is for topics about you that might be of interest to you. So I invite you to and encourage you to listen to all of the programs that are available on Radio Hawke's Bay, which is, again, your radio station. And I am... Gail, I am a life coach. I am also a psychic, a tarot reader, clairvoyant artist, um, a, a whole medium, a whole lot of things. I am a lot of things. And because of that, I have always in my life found it quite difficult to have a focused direction, if, for want of another word. So I focus my direction in line with my intuition, my intuitive abilities, which are psychic abilities, which you have, you have, we all have those. Uh, we have uh, the ability to develop them. And by paying attention to the hunches that you have, to those little coincidences and synchronicities that are meant to be, by paying attention to those, you gain information and insight that your eyes and ears and mind brain don't actually give you. So I love that area. I love the exploration of our unseen side of ourself, of the side we haven't been trained in, because it gives you the freedom to in your own time and in your own way and with whatever appeals to you to become involved with. It gives you that freedom to be able to learn and develop a curiosity, a skill, something that you know that maybe you have had happen for you in your life before, like maybe you do get strong hunches and so maybe you can develop that more. The first way you do that, of course, is to go, oh, that was a hunch. Okay, I'll follow it up. I followed that hunch up and that was right. So that helps to develop the strength of your hunches to become more often and to become stronger. So 
uh, paying attention to if you also look at something and you see something completely different. When you look back, you go, oh, no, that, that wasn't there. That was something. That's that. Well, how do I, why did I see that weird thing? It is because you were seeing it for reasons. Sometimes it's a face, to be honest, and sometimes it's not a face you would recognise. If it is a face you recognise, well, it definitely is your loved one. If it's a face you do not recognise, and you can see these anywhere, anywhere all the time, I do, all the time, carpet, walls, um, arrangements on, of anything, even, um, you know, pictures. If you're not looking at them, you see something else. Does that make sense? If you're not looking at something, you see something else. If you are in a mind fog, you will think you're imagining some things. If you've been through trauma and a really um, tough situation, you might think you're losing your mind. I can promise you, you are not. Uh, there is another world uh, parallel to this world. There are many, actually, worlds parallel to this world. This is the solidest. Therefore, it is the one that we see uh, pretty much constantly. Well, we do. We see it constantly. And there is an, another world that exists and other worlds that exist at the same time. It would be very, very confusing if we could see those other worlds all the time. And we would eventually perhaps be drawn into one of those other realities and lose the reality of our physical, everyday, solid, practical life experience. Because this is a solid existence, we are invited to participate in it as much as possible. We can utilize our psychic intuitive abilities, however, for enriching uh, the information around us, for explaining uh, things that are happening around us, um, for understanding what's going on and what it's all about. So your intuitive psychic abilities are very, very much your strength. They are your, your clearer eyes. Your, they are your strongest hearing. They are your most tactile feeling sensory aspects of yourself as well. So, if you have never explored <laughs> your intuitive side, and I understand if you are religious, that this could be uncomfortable for you. I was brought up, brought up in a healing religion. I talked to God every single solitary, probably at least hour, if not minute by jolly minute of the day, because I had such curiosities about why everything was it, the way it was and because inherently I felt it shouldn't have to be. It shouldn't have to be hard. We shouldn't need to have these problems. Why, 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 why? And I got a lot of information, a lot of downloads of information about the world, the universe, a whole lot of things which I struggled against and resisted actually, right up until my um, 40s, when I was given a huge amount of thought information, download, whatever you want to call it, about the human experience, that this is the human experience. It is just one experience. It has a limited amount of time for good reason, because it is a very tough uh, experience. It is very insistent. It's in our face. And I got all this information, and then I got that I had chosen to be in this experience, and that meant that I must immerse myself in this experience and not try and escape it. I had, for many years sought to have, to be spiritual, to be in spirit, spirit world, not here. And 
that caused physical problems in my body that um, I did not know about at the time. There was not a lot of spoken words about this subject at all as I was growing up. So religion for me was, and talking to God was my, it was my YouTube. <laughs> it was my internet. It was um, very interesting, that the information that I was told. And I know there is more to us because of that. I know there is more to understand because of that. I know there are more answers to your questions than you can possibly imagine. And if you have a question, there is an answer. If you have a question, there is an answer. And you may be ready for it, or maybe you're not. I can promise you that every single question you have will be answered at some point. And maybe not while you're alive, but after you have passed, all your questions are answered pretty much in an instant. And that is because you have this ability within your being, everybody does, that has a review that of your life. But every instant, every second, every nanosecond of your life is reviewed and can be reviewed on your moment of passing. And that is when you get clarity. That is when you finally understand everything about yourself, your life, every question you had. You actually see the realness of your life and not the fakeness of the life that you've experienced. Because there's a lot of fakeness in our life, and you know that, because even if you look at anything on social media or even some news channels, there is fake news, there is misleading information. This is all very deliberate, and I question this for a long time because growing up, we have, we did anyway, had news that was 100% as factual, at least, as it could be that we knew based on the fact that there wasn't a lot of communication. And maybe there were some things that helped people to feel better, but they were always about making people feel better, not confusing them. As I find modern day, it is about confusing people. And so what I do as I look at the theme, uh, there's been many, many generations before us. And within my lifetime, I have seen certain groups of people going through very similar experiences, which I call themes. And these themes all have a purpose and a place. I look at generations, and every generation has a difference to it. My grandparents said, what's the world coming to? And I can absolutely uh, relate to that because I've had the same thought before. What's the world coming to? Where there are rules and not rules, where it's your fault if the other person did something bad to you. It, it is something that I know is necessary there's a part of me and a part of you that's a higher part of you that knows things and understands things a lot more. The human you will, will become confused and distracted and um, things will be distorted for a while, but the higher you is always in you. And we talked a bit about this in another session, but if you want the higher you to look at it from a higher viewpoint or to know the reality of something, just connect in with that higher part of you by saying, I am. And the higher part of me wants now to look at this, to deal with this, to view this, to see this with more clarity. So I understand I've just gone sideways and 
apologies happens in my well that I go sideways. Anything that is left unsaid, it is because the rest will come. Other information will come to you in some other way, maybe by someone else saying it, or you might just be led to something that you need to see, listen to or read. Um, and it's kind of how life works, but it's how spirit works. It's how the universe works. There is uh, no rules, and I guess this is why we are in this no rule time. This is where we're all in this confusing space where nobody knows right and wrong necessarily, except by the measure of the law. And it's got a purpose. So its purpose, very clearly, is so that all of those old paradigms that we lived under get broken absolutely, completely, and out of this confusion, learning and new growth, because it's like we've started again. We have to learn to be kind. They're teaching children about kindness and caring. That was a shocker for me. But it's because everything of the old needed to be broken down. And why we couldn't keep the kindness and caring, uh, that one's a little bit of a mystery. But maybe people had to appreciate it. And maybe being taught it in schools alongside the academic things is part of teaching feelings, teaching children and people to appreciate their intuitive side, appreciate that they have an intuitive side. And their feelings are the leader into those areas because clear sentience, feeling, feeling, and feeling clearly is uh, a gift. If you have a feeling, if you're going somewhere or you have an event and you have a feeling that is not comfortable, it says this experience won't be comfortable for you. If you're going to an event and you have a pit in your stomach, a feeling of dread uh, is a good word, but a feeling of uh, a stone in your stomach, I don't know, just like, I don't know, that kind of feeling. It means uh, you should not probably go because there is something that will uh, be happening in that event which really, really affects you. And with having that feeling, perhaps it's not necessary. You know, if you go blindly into things without having a sense, a feeling, it's part of your journey, purpose and learning. If you have a feeling, you have a choice. And if you go for some other person's reason or because you think you should or because it's expected of you, then your feeling in the pit of your stomach is just telling you it's actually not going to work well and wisdom would say perhaps it's better not to go for your own sake. And guess what? You are the most important person. So therefore, you must look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, that's on you. The universe, source, love, God will protect you. And if you ask for protection, if you ask for anything, strength, you will get that. It will not change the event or the impact unless you are prepared for it and that can lessen the impact. But there will be impact if you've got a pit in the stomach. So take notice of those kinds of things. They generally, the ones we take notice of, are the other, um, you know, feeling things are a bit off is also another one. Things are a bit off because maybe you forgot something, you know. <laughs> Especially if you go out to the car and you get that feeling of, have I got everything? Because often that one, we've done it so often in our lives, that one can come in words. 
So if you uh, pay more attention to that, it actually develops, it actually grows stronger. There is nothing to be afraid of uh, unless you are afraid of information. And some of us are, I guess. Uh, if you are afraid of truth and seeing the truth of a situation, yeah, that's another reason to avoid that part of yourself. Uh, in the end, though, life will face you with all those things that you are afraid of. And that's just what happens. It's not um, because of one thing or another. It simply is. You are here to face certain things. And if you get it over with, it's gone very quickly. If you choose not to face a fear, but run away instead, it will follow you. It will hound you. It will not let you go. And you may be successful in burying it and hiding it under the mantle of your work and your distractions in life. But at some point in time, it has this terrible um, habit of going, hello, with something else in your life. So my advice about that simply is fears are the scariest things, uh, the hardest things, things we will avoid at all costs, especially if they're huge. However, if you, um, I've done this in my life where I've said, I can't handle this quite right now, uh, a little bit at a time, uh, I do want to look at it a little bit at a time. Um, or can I just have a time to take a breath and then I'll look at it. Okay. I, it's what I do because sometimes when it's right in your face, it's a little bit overwhelming. So if you take a step back, which is, okay, I know I've got to face this. And, and you do this automatically, you know, on little things, but it's the big things. It's the inner stuff it's the unfinished business it's the trauma from your life that's the hardest to face so it's very normal to be afraid it's just part of our um, condition and you might go I'm not afraid of anything do you get stressed do you get anxious do you get worried or um fidgety? Do you have to get up and do something? Do you have to actually just go and get some fresh air? That is because fear is, is saying hello. Okay, but it's normal and it's natural. But fear, fear itself is absolutely nothing. It's the fear of something that's happened in the past or something that could imaginary happen in the future. The past can't hurt you anymore. So there is nothing to be afraid of. Now is the only time that is important. The future, what you might be afraid of, is manageable right now. There are, it's hard, you know, because there's difficult things that we face, like maybe it's an interview. Um, what do you do if you're facing an interview? You haven't been in, in, to an interview in like 20 years or something and you just feel ill-equipped. You don't know how they do it these days. Uh, look, make it easy. Go on YouTube, have a little look at um, how to conduct an interview or find out from someone else that's just been through interviews. Uh, just whatever you can, in whichever way you can, um, pre-rehearse it. Uh, there is something called, it's an actual thing, it's neuro-linguistic programming, uh, which I've also done, and it's called future pacing. So you put yourself in a relaxed sort of, who cares because you're not there, right? And you 
walk yourself through getting up in the morning, getting dressed, what will you wear, getting in the car, driving, having music on that's relaxing in the car, um, walking into the interview, seeing the people in front of you, rehearsing to have the smile on your face before you walk in, to be confident, to know that you are capable of this role. And if you're not feeling quite well equipped for this role, you just say, well, I'm here and I'm going to make the best out of it. They can um, see my value or not. Uh, they can decide whether I'm good enough for the job or not. But I'm here and I'm fulfilling this part of the process in getting a job that I love. Because if you, like with the car that we talked about before, if you get in the car and, and have a test drive of a new car to see what it feels like in a house, you can do this in the same way. Go have an interview. Go have an interview. Doesn't matter if you think you're gonna get the job or not. And if you've done this a couple of times, the interviews will just become easier, especially if you have an attitude that I'm just go going to do this interview because it's one step toward me getting my dream job. Every interview is another step toward me getting my dream job. And if you do that, it's less pressure when a real job you really want comes up, but you can future pace it. You can go, look, I've been through all of these um, interviews. I know what I'm doing in the interview. I know how to present myself. I know how to be pleasant. I know how to um, answer questions or divert uh, or, or just say, well, that's something I don't know about. Um, quite honestly in an interview. So, so fear is nothing actually. And in this moment, if you have been afraid of something that you're facing in your life, in this moment, right now, take a breath. You can count to three. And then you can count to 10. And then you can count to five. And then you can count to three. And then you can notice where your fear is. If you have involved yourself in the breath and breath out and the focus on count one, two, three, slowly, not fast. We go one, two, three. That's not what I'm talking about. One, two, three, thoughtfully and mindfully. Then look at your fear. Has it slightened? Has it diminished? What's happened? You can repeat that exercise because it does help for the fear to settle a little. The more you do it, the more the fear will settle. The more you stay in this moment, the more the fear is irrelevant because it hasn't happened yet. Whatever you're afraid of, it's not happening right in this moment. If it's happening in this moment, take a breath, count to three, be calm, Say something to yourself that's reassuring. I am okay. I will be okay. My mother was wonderful because my mother always said those things to us as children, no matter what happened to us. There were things that you are all right, which was said a lot back in the day. And that simply was because whatever you had happened to you was generally a child um, accident and therefore the war that was going on at the time was far more major. Everyone was going through far more major things. And so the saying, you're all right, was you're not in a war, you're not struggling um, 
it's like everybody else's, you're okay. And so those words actually have meaning when you say them to yourself. I am okay. I say that a lot to myself when I'm really not feeling okay. But I say it with a certainty. I am okay. And I sometimes might have to say it quite often. So fear is nothing. Stay in the present. Whatever you imagine that you are afraid of, walk yourself through it in your mind and in your imagination as if you are doing it right now and that will help for when you actually do do it. It is a technique that is used a lot in neurolinguistics. And so if you wanted to look up neurolinguistic um, NLP, then Tony Robbins is the person to look at. He has um, he was doing it around the same time that I was, and he has taken it to big arenas uh, worldwide. Uh, and he is very interesting just to listen to. You can find him on YouTube uh, or Google. So we are in July, first of July. Uh, so. I'm Gail, this is Radio Hawks Bay. If you want to contact me personally for a session, uh, they go for an hour. Uh, it can be on anything to do with your life. It can be to do with uh, looking at what's coming up for you in your life with a tarot reading or clairvoyance or contacting a loved one um, who's in spirit. My phone number is 27 four one six six five four five and uh, all you have to do is ring me to get hold of me or text so we are in July and July is a new month so tough months behind us now June it was like little things starting to improve and so therefore like the dawn of a new day so July, we've got more of that happening, more of that coming. So let's have a little look and see what uh, the cards actually say. So in tarot, there's nothing to be afraid of. They're simply playing cards that we still use today. So let me look at, and you can't see these cards today. We have no video. It is simply... Uh, just my voice today we have technical problems and I do hope I'm not um, contributing to those because sometimes my energy gets very um, kind of in sync with electrical things I'll say it that way right so we've got two cards down so now let's have a little look at the third cards and I will start so wow for all of you out there and this is all of you out there this month is a lot more, a lot more abundant, okay? So there's going to be the opportunity for uh, more money to come your way, um, just more of the things that you need. You will be a magnet. You are the magnet this month. This is the month where you look at yourself. You look at um, how you can change yourself, improve yourself. It's maybe time for some new things in your life. Express you somehow in a different way to the people around you. And if you need to express yourself to a new set of people uh, to feel less self-conscious, then do that. It is there's always places you can see new people. Go join a new club or just just go be around a vibe of a whole different group, even if you're not that interested in it. This is your magnet month. This is when you think about what it is that you would like, but you feel, you feel, this is the most important part of attracting and law of attraction, is drawing toward yourself. You feel what you love. You feel what you would like. You feel what you would aspire to having in your life. And you feel it. 
with the strongest feeling you can and then then intensify it intensify it a hundred percent intensify it another hundred percent intensify it as much as you can and you will see that people notice you that they're just attracted to you that they and especially if you're looking for um, love people if you shine your light this month you will attract even if you've got a relationship you that person in your relationship will notice you more they will value you more they will want to be around you more and this of course is if you're being the best you this is the month to be the best you so there are some things for, for, for you out there that you've been waiting on these things and maybe there are delays because they can't be any other way. Maybe there are delays because it relies on another person or it relies on a workplace doing some restructuring or making a job available. It says your patience will be rewarded. This is the month to sort of sit, be in yourself, not worry about having to do anything it's done it's the rest of it's been done for you the universe is shuffling chairs around and making things fit into place just for you sorting things out to line up just for you if there is anything this month that you have to give up bless it because what you're giving up is opening the door for you to receive something better. Whatever you have to walk away from is because you are walking toward something inherently better, a huge improvement in your life. It is, it is a time to sit and contemplate rather than madly do things. You are the magnet, so sit in being you. Sit in being that attracting force. Sit waiting to see what will unfold in your life, what will happen for you. And I get it. We've been trained that for anything to happen, you have to do something and then it will happen. That is not true. It's not entirely true, put it that way. It is, in my experience, a lot of the things that have happened in my life are through non-action because I got in my own way, mostly, because I was do, 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 and I was missing everything. And the universe created situations in my life where I was sat down, literally stopped in my life from what I was doing and there was empty space and that was because I needed to stop and pay attention and it is a very long empty space it's like it never ends things are happening all the time that are being shifted and sorted in your favor that will line up with your purpose line up with your wishes, your dreams, your goals. So it's about being patient this year. And then we have the magician. So I have the empress first, the hanged man second, which is the one I just talked about being patient. And anything that you give up is for something better. And then I have the magician. So all these three this month are quite powerful together. It means if you slow down in your life, good, good things will happen. It means that if you stop trying to achieve, 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 but you go, okay, what's next? You will see something more clearly to, to kind of act on. And we say, be patient, do nothing because the things that are in the come, in, come in front of you are the things to attend to. So we've got to eat, sleep and all those things. We've got to go to work. But in between times, it's rest, relax, have a hush moment. 
And in that hush moment, you might just notice something in your lounge that you haven't seen for a long time and you might actually take notice of it for the first time and you might go, oh, actually, that would work now for me. If I used that, I could do this. And then you do it. That's your step one. That links in with this whole year of uh, being able to have what you want being able to make things happen, being able to succeed at things, being able to achieve things. So in your hush moments, you will absolutely get to see things that you can do. You might have, um, oh, I don't know, you, it, it might be that you, there's something you haven't done for a long, long time. Maybe you used to do something and you forgot about it and then you go, you pick something up and it's like, oh, that reminds you of what you used to do. It means right in that moment, it's showing you this is the time to kind of take it up again and maybe play with it. Because it's about, it's about having fun with what you do, but without feeling the fun necessarily. Um, people say, enjoy your bliss. And, you know, if you don't know what your bliss is, that's really hard. If you've not felt much joy in your life, and some people say, you know, live your joy, or uh, there's another saying, and I can't remember it. But if they say, you know, be joyful, it's like, yeah, what's that? You know? And <laughs> I know most of you are going, yeah, we all know what that is. Why don't you? Because some people, and some of you out there, have had very tough lives that have been very serious and sad and quite tragic and that is a reality that you have lived to find joy from that is like the most hugest hugest step so I would say to you just find something that feels a little bit better right now to do a little bit better to experience because a lot of this bliss hush um, is about just sitting, being, surrounding yourself in your environment with warmth, maybe music, maybe just conversation in from the TV. You know, I um, I grew up in a, a very busy household, a smallish standard house and seven of us in there and it was always full and always noisy and very stressful. However, I found trying just to sit still extraordinarily difficult. And I mean extraordinarily difficult. I couldn't sit with myself. So having a TV show on or something like that, conversation, it can help fill the space. I never remember to do that. But when I do, I go, oh, that's better. And so the little things like that, or even maybe just, if you can, just buy yourself a little, a little treat of something. And it's about anything you do this month that is for you particularly will affect you in a very positive way but it's like it'll just make you feel better it'll just turn things around in your mind especially if they've been very bleak and very hard and such a struggle it's like do these things and they will just turn that around for you uh, lift you out of it in some way and the more you do the more it'll lift you out um, the more you sit with yourself and just make sure your environment is warm, nurturing, you've got food, you've got everything there, um, you've got your phone there, you've got like just sitting in the chair where everything is within your reach so you don't have to get up and down and up and down and up and down um, all the time. But just that everything is there within your reach. That has a certain kind of bliss about it, you know, especially if you've had a busy life, busy day, and there has been a lot of noise around you. Just having 
things at your fingertips, the ability to have noise if you want it, the ability to have song if you want it, you know, food, um, warmth, like everything right there and you can just sit and be, be in your skin. Have you sat and thought about, this is me, I am in my skin? Have you thought that? Have you done that? Have you allowed yourself to be you? Acknowledge self, acknowledge you, because it's important. Okay, so I will have another random card just before we finish. Um, let me see, what else for the month? So this month of July, we've come out of that whole, whole tough stuff, if you wanna know, it's improving. It's improving, it's improving. So what else have we got for this month that could give us, oh yes. I've had these cards a few times I feel this year, actually. And it, this one is the world. So for those of you that know the cards, you can look it up and you can put your own interpretation for yourself on it. Because yes, this is general. This is a theme, you know, uh, often we share uh, certain experiences uh, the same as other people and this is the same kind of experience. I read cards for you and they just share a general theme of uh, energies that are around, things that are going on. This is an empowering month for you as a, as a, as a person. It is an empowering, I matter, I count, I deserve, I am confident, I'm going to show what I can do, I'm going to be the best version of myself. And the world says, take a leap of faith, not literally, but step up. Step up your life in some way because it says your life is going to step up. It, a little bit of input from you, a little bit of sacrifice downtime from you, a little bit of validation of yourself to yourself, your world will open up. There will be opportunities for you to be engaged in that you can move forward with. These things are ready for you if you allow yourself to not be anxious uh, about the next step. The next step for the rest of the year, we've got at least July, it's all coming good. And it's a positive year, all in all, yes, struggles for the year, successes as well for the year. A lot of you that have had your houses um, through the cyclone, I know a lot of you are still struggling to get work done, but it's starting. So there's that promise of, it, of success. It says it's better for the waiting. It's better for the waiting because it will turn out better than you thought. And you will appreciate it a whole lot more because you've waited for it and because you've wanted it and because maybe there were things you wanted to have that were slightly different uh, from your old place to your new place. It is, uh, for those of you that are looking for your um, home still, there is, uh, the words I got for your forever home, which means your permanent home being your next home being your permanent home and it says that this is possible and achievable there are just some little things you might have to participate in um, involve yourself in uh, do that you wouldn't have done before and a lot of you are manifesting already for your new place for your where next um, living situation dream it imagine it step through it Make like you're already on your way there. Even start packing a couple of boxes. Because that's a signal. These are all signals to the universe that you're ready. But you are ready for a big step up, a big step forward in your life, an upgrade in your life. You are ready. Uh, July says the door is open. Uh, what are you going to do? And on that note, lovely people, have a good day. This is Gail. You are with Radio Hawks Bay. And it has been my pleasure. If you want to contact me, it is 027 4166 545.
program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Hawke's Bay, your community access media station. Thanks to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible. The quality of our physical, everyday, solid, practical life experience. Because this is a solid existence, we are invited to participate in it as much as possible. We can utilise our psychic intuitive abilities, however, for enriching uh, the information around us, for explaining uh, things that are happening around us, um, for understanding what's going on and what it's all about. So your intuitive psychic abilities are very, very much your strength. They are your, your clearer eyes. Your, they are your strongest hearing. They are your most tactile feeling sensory aspects of yourself as well. So, if you have never explored <laughs> your intuitive side, and I understand if you are religious, that this could be uncomfortable for you. I was brought up, brought up in a healing religion. I talked to God every single solitary, probably at least hour, if not minute by jolly minute of the day, because I had such curiosities about why everything was it, the way it was and because inherently I felt it shouldn't have to be. It shouldn't have to be hard. We shouldn't need to have these problems. Why, 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 why? And I got a lot of information, a lot of downloads of information about the world, the universe, a whole lot of things which I struggled against and resisted actually, right up until my um, 40s, when I was given a huge amount of thought information, download, whatever you want to call it, about the human experience, that this is the human experience. It is just one experience. It has a limited amount of time for good reason, because it is a very tough uh, experience. It is very insistent. It's in our face. And I got all this information, and then I got that I had chosen to be in this experience, and that meant that I must immerse myself in this experience and not try and escape it. I had, for many years sought to have, to be spiritual, to be in spirit, spirit world, not here. And that caused physical problems in my body that um, I did not know about at the time. There was not a lot of spoken words about this subject at all as I was growing up. So religion for me was, and talking to God was my it was my YouTube, <laughs> it was my internet. It was um, very interesting, that the information that I was told. And I know there is more to us because of that. I know there is more to understand because of that. I know there are more answers to your questions than you can possibly imagine. And if you have a question, there is an answer. If you have a question, there is an answer. And you may be ready for it, or maybe you're not. I can promise you that every single question you have will be answered at some point. And maybe not while you're alive, but after you have passed, all your questions are answered pretty much in an instant. And that is because you have this ability within your being, everybody does, that has a review that of your life. But every instant, every 
second, every nanosecond of your life is reviewed and can be reviewed on your moment of passing. And that is when you get clarity. That is when you finally understand everything about yourself, your life, every question you had. You actually see the realness of your life and not the fakeness of the life that you've experienced. Because there's a lot of fakeness in our life, and you know that, because even if you look at anything on social media or even some news channels, there is fake news, there is misleading information. This is all very deliberate, and I questioned this for a long time because growing up, we have, we did anyway, had news that was 100% as factual, at least, as it could be that we knew based on the fact that there wasn't a lot of communication. And maybe there were some things that helped people to feel better, but they were always about making people feel better, not confusing them. As I find modern day, it is about confusing people. And so what I do is I look at the theme. Uh, there's been many, many generations before us. And within my lifetime, I have seen certain groups of people going through very similar experiences, which I call themes. And these themes all have a purpose and a place. I look at generations, and every generation has a difference to it. My grandparents said, what's the world coming to? And I can absolutely uh, relate to that because I've had the same thought before. What's the world coming to? Where there are rules and not rules, where it's your fault if the other person did something bad to you. It, it is something that I know is necessary there's a part of me and a part of you that's a higher part of you that knows things and understands things a lot more. The human you will, will become confused and distracted and um, things will be distorted for a while, but the higher you is always in you. And we talked a bit about this in another session, but if you want the higher you, to look at it from a higher viewpoint or to know the reality of something, just connect in with that higher part of you by saying, I am. And the higher part of me wants now to look at this, to deal with this, to view this, to see this with more clarity. So I understand I've just gone sideways and apologies happens in my world that I go sideways. Anything that is left unsaid, it is because the rest will come. Other information will come to you in some other way, maybe by someone else saying it, or you might just be led to something that you need to see, listen to or read. Um, and it's kind of how life works, but it's how spirit works. It's how the universe works. There is uh, no rules, and I guess this is why we are in this no rule time. This is where we're all in this confusing space where nobody knows right and wrong necessarily, except by the measure of the law. And it's got a purpose. So its purpose, very clearly, is so that all of those old paradigms that we lived under get broken absolutely, completely, and out of this confusion, learning and new growth, because it's like we've started again. We have to learn to be kind. They're teaching children about kindness and caring. That was a shocker for me. 
But it's because everything of the old needed to be broken down. And why we couldn't keep the kindness and caring, uh, that one's a little bit of a mystery. But maybe people had to appreciate it. And maybe being taught it in schools alongside the academic things is part of teaching feelings, teaching children and people to appreciate their intuitive side, appreciate that they have an intuitive side and their feelings are the leader into those areas because clear sentience, feeling, feeling and feeling clearly is uh, a gift. If you have a feeling, if you're going somewhere or you have an event and you have a feeling that is not comfortable, it says this experience won't be comfortable for you. If you're going to an event and you have a pit in your stomach, a feeling of dread uh, is a good word, but a feeling of uh, a stone in your stomach, I don't know, just like, I don't know, that kind of feeling. It means uh, you should not probably go because there is something that will uh, be a happening in that event which really, really affects you. And p with having that feeling, p perhaps it's not necessary. You know, if you go blindly into things without having a sense, a feeling, it's part of your journey, purpose and learning. If you have a feeling, you have a choice. And if you go for some other person's reason or because you think you should or because it's expected of you, then your feeling in the pit of your stomach is just telling you it's actually not going to work well and wisdom would say perhaps it's better not to go for your own sake. And guess what? You are the most important person. So therefore, you must look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, that's on you. The universe, source, love, God will protect you. And if you ask for protection, if you ask for anything, strength, you will get that. It will not change the event or the impact unless you are prepared for it and that can lessen the impact. But there will be impact if you've got a pit in the stomach. So take notice of those kinds of things. They generally, the ones we take notice of, are the other, um, you know, feeling things are a bit off is also another one. Things are a bit off because maybe you forgot something, you know. <laughs> Especially if you go out to the car and you get that feeling of, have I got everything? Because often that one, we've done it so often in our lives, that one can come in words. So if you... Uh, pay more attention to that, it actually develops, it actually grows stronger. There is nothing to be afraid of, uh, unless you are afraid of information. And some of us are, I guess. Uh, if you are afraid of truth and seeing the truth of a situation, yeah, that's another reason to avoid that part of yourself. Uh, in the end though, life will face you with all those things that you are afraid of. And that's just what happens. It's not um, because of one thing or another. It simply is. You are here to face certain things. And if you get it over with, it's gone very quickly. If you choose not to face a fear, but run away instead, it will follow you. It will hound you. It will not let you go and you may be successful in burying it and hiding it under the mantle of your work and your distractions in life but at some point in time it has this terrible um, habit of going hello with something else in your life. So my advice about that simply is fears are the scariest things 
uh, the hardest things, the things we will avoid at all costs, especially if they're huge. However, if you, um, I've done this in my life where I've said, I can't handle this quite right now, uh, a little bit at a time, uh, I do want to look at it a little bit at a time, um, or can I just have a time to take a breath and then I'll look at it, okay? It's what I do because sometimes when it's right in your face, it's a little bit overwhelming. So if you take a step back, which is, okay, I know I've got to face this. And, and you do this automatically, you know, on little things, but it's the big things. It's the inner stuff. It's the unfinished business. It's the trauma from your life that's the hardest to face. So it's very normal to be afraid. It's just part of our um, condition. And you might go, oh, I'm not afraid of anything. Do you get stressed? Do you get anxious? Do you get worried or um, fidgety? Do you have to get up and do something? Do you have to actually just go and get some fresh air? That is because fear is, is saying, hello. Okay, but it's normal and it's natural. But fear, fear itself is absolutely nothing. It's the fear of something that's happened in the past or something that could imaginary happen in the future. The past can't hurt you anymore. So there is nothing to be afraid of. Now is the only time that is important. The future, what you might be afraid of, is manageable right now. There are, it's hard, you know, because there's difficult things that we face, like maybe it's an interview. Um, what do you do if you're facing an interview? You haven't been in, in, to an interview in like 20 years or something and you just feel ill-equipped. You don't know how they do it these days. Uh, look, make it easy. Go on YouTube, have a little look at um, how to conduct an interview or find out from someone else that's just been through interviews. Uh, just whatever you can, in whichever way you can. Um, pre-rehearse it uh, there is something called it's an actual thing it's neuro-linguistic programming uh, which I've also done and it's called future pacing so you put yourself in a relaxed sort of who cares because you're not there right and you walk yourself through getting up in the morning getting dressed what will you wear getting in the car, driving, having music on that's relaxing in the car, um, walking into the interview, seeing the people in front of you, rehearsing to have the smile on your face before you walk in, to be confident, to know that you are capable of this role. And if you're not feeling quite well equipped for this role, you just say, well, I'm here and I'm going to make the best out of it they can um, see my value or not, uh, they can decide whether I'm good enough for the job or not, but I'm here and I'm fulfilling this part of the process in getting a job that I love. Because if you, like with the car that we talked about before, if you get in the car and, and have a test drive of a new car to see what it feels like in a house, you can do this in the same way, go have an interview. Go have an interview. Doesn't matter if you think you're going to get the job or not. And if you've done this a couple of times, the interviews will just become easier. Especially if you have an attitude that I'm just going to do this interview because it's one step toward me getting my dream job. Every interview is another step toward me getting my dream job. And 
if you do that, it's less pressure when a real job you really want comes up, but you can future pace it. You can go, look, I've been through all of these um, interviews. I know what I'm doing in the interview. I know how to present myself. I know how to be pleasant. I know how to um, answer questions or divert uh, or, or just say, well, that's something I don't know about. Um, quite honestly in an interview. So so fear is nothing actually. And in this moment, if you have been afraid of something that you're facing in your life, in this moment, right now, take a breath. You can count to three. And then you can count to 10. And then you can count to five. And then you can count to three. And then you can notice where your fear is. If you have involved yourself in the breath and breath out and the focus on count one, two, three, slowly, not fast. We go one, two, three. That's not what I'm talking about. One, two, three, thoughtfully and mindfully. Then look at your fear. Has it slightened? Has it diminished? What's happened? You can repeat that exercise because it does help for the fear to settle a little. The more you do it, the more the fear will settle. The more you stay in this moment, the more the fear is irrelevant because it hasn't happened yet. Whatever you're afraid of, it's not happening right in this moment. If it's happening in this moment, take a breath, count to three, be calm, Say something to yourself that's reassuring. I am okay. I will be okay. My mother was wonderful because my mother always said those things to us as children. No matter what happened to us, there were things that you are all right, which was said a lot back in the day. And that simply was because whatever you had happened to you was generally a child um, accident and therefore the war that was going on at the time was far more major. Everyone was going through far more major things. And so the saying, you're all right, was you're not in a war, you're not struggling um, like everybody else's, you're okay. And so those words actually have meaning when you say them to yourself. I am okay. I say that a lot to myself when I'm really not feeling okay. But I say it with a certainty. I am okay. And I sometimes might have to say it quite often. So fear is nothing. Stay in the present. Whatever you imagine that you are afraid of, walk yourself through it in your mind and in your imagination as if you are doing it right now and that will help for when you actually do do it. It is a technique that is used a lot in neurolinguistics. And so, if you wanted to look up neurolinguistic um, NLP, then Tony Robbins is the person to look at. He, has, um, he was doing it around the same time that I was, and he has taken it to big arenas uh, worldwide. Uh, and he is very interesting just to listen to. You can find him on YouTube uh, or Google. So we are in July, 1st of July. Uh, so I'm Gail, this is Radio Hawks Bay. If you want to contact me personally for a session, uh, they go for an hour. 
Uh, it can be on anything to do with your life. It can be to do with uh, looking at what's coming up for you in your life with a tarot reading or clairvoyance or contacting a loved one um, who's in spirit. My phone number is 27 416-6545 and uh, all you have to do is ring me to get hold of me or text. So we are in July and July is a new month. So tough months behind us now. June, it was like little things starting to improve and so therefore like the dawn of a new day. So July, we've got more of that happening, more of that coming. So let's have a little look and see what uh, the cards actually say. So in tarot, there's nothing to be afraid of. They're simply playing cards that we still use today. So let me look at, and you can't see these cards today. We have no video. It is simply uh, just my voice today. We have technical problems and I do hope I'm not um, contributing to those because sometimes my energy gets very um, kind of in sync with electrical things. I'll say it that way. Right, so we've got two cards down. So now let's have a little look at the third cards and I will start. So... Wow, for all of you out there, and this is all of you out there, this month is a lot more, a lot more abundant, okay? So there's going to be the opportunity for uh, more money to come your way, um, just more of the things that you need. You will be a magnet. You are the magnet this month. This is the month where you look at yourself, you look at um, how you can change yourself, improve yourself. It's maybe time for some new things in your life. Express you somehow in a different way to the people around you. And if you need to express yourself to a new set of people uh, to feel less self-conscious, then do that. It is, there's always places you can see new people. Go join a new club or just just go be around a vibe of a whole different group, even if you're not that interested in it. This is your magnet month. This is when you think about what it is that you would like, but you feel, you feel, this is the most important part of attracting and law of attraction, is drawing toward yourself. You feel what you love. You feel what you would like. You feel what you would aspire to having in your life. And you feel it with the strongest feeling you can. And then, then intensify it. Intensify it 100%. Intensify it another 100% intensify it as much as you can and you will see that people notice you that they're just attracted to you that they and especially if you're looking for um, love people if you shine your light this month you will attract even if you've got a relationship you that person in your relationship will notice you more they will value you more. They will want to be around you more. And this, of course, is if you're being the best you. This is the month to be the best you. So there are some things for, for, for you out there that you've been waiting on these things. And maybe there are delays because they can't be any other way. Maybe there are delays because it relies on another person or it relies on a workplace doing some restructuring or making a job available. It says your patience will be rewarded. This is the month to sort of sit, be in yourself, not worry about having to do anything. It's done. It's The rest of it's been done for you. The universe is shuffling chairs around and making things fit into place just for you. 
sorting things out to line up just for you. If there is anything this month that you have to give up, bless it. Because what you're giving up is opening the door for you to receive something better. Whatever you have to walk away from is because you are walking toward something inherently better, a huge improvement in your life. It is, it is a time to sit and contemplate rather than madly do things. You are the magnet, so sit in being you. Sit in being that attracting force. Sit waiting to see what will unfold in your life, what will happen for you. And I get it. We've been trained that for anything to happen, you have to do something and then it will happen. That is not true. It's not entirely true, put it that way. It is, in my experience, a lot of the things that have happened in my life are through non-action because I got in my own way, mostly, because I was do, 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 and I was missing everything. And the universe created situations in my life where I was sat down, literally stopped in my life from what I was doing and there was empty space and that was because I needed to stop and pay attention and it is a very long empty space it's like it never ends things are happening all the time that are being shifted and sorted in your favor that will line up with your purpose line up with your wishes, your dreams, your goals. So it's about being patient this year. And then we have the magician. So I have the empress first, the hanged man second, which is the one I just talked about, being patient. And anything that you give up is for something better. And then I have the magician. So all these three this month are quite powerful together. It means if you slow down in your life, good, good things will happen. It means that if you stop trying to achieve, 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 but you go, okay, what's next? You will see something more clearly to, to kind of act on. And we say, be patient, do nothing because the things that are in, become, come in front of you are the things to attend to. So we've got to eat, sleep and all those things. We've got to go to work. But in between times, it's rest, relax, have a hush moment. And in that hush moment, you might just notice something in your lounge that you haven't seen for a long time and you might actually take notice of it for the first time and you might go, oh, actually, that would work now for me. If I used that, I could do this. And then you do it. That's your step one. That links in with this whole year of uh, being able to have what you want, being able to make things happen, being able to succeed at things, being able to achieve things. So in your hush moments, you will absolutely get to see things that you can do. You might have, um, oh, I don't know, you, it, it might be that you, there's something you haven't done for a long, long time. Maybe you used to do something and you forgot about it and then you go, you pick something up and it's like, oh, that reminds you of what you used to do. It means right in that moment, it's showing you this is the time to kind of Take it up again and maybe play with it because it's about it's about having fun with what you do but without feeling the fun necessarily. Um, people say enjoy your bliss and 
you know, if you don't know what your bliss is, that's really hard. If you've not felt much joy in your life, and some people say, you know, live your joy, or uh, there's another saying and I can't remember it. But if they say, you know, be joyful, it's like, yeah, what's that? You know? And <laughs> I know most of you are going, yeah, we all know what that is. Why don't you? Because some people and some of you out there have had very tough lives and have been very serious and sad and quite tragic. And that is a reality that you have lived. To find joy from that is like the most hugest, hugest step. So I would say to you, just find something that feels a little bit better right now to do a little bit better to experience because a lot of this bliss hush um, is about just sitting being surrounding yourself in your environment with warmth maybe music maybe just conversation in from the tv you know i um I grew up in a, a very busy household, a smallish standard house and seven of us in there and it was always full and always noisy and very stressful. However, I found trying just to sit still extraordinarily difficult and I mean extraordinarily difficult. I couldn't sit with myself. So having a TV show on or something like that, conversation, it can help fill the space. I never remember to do that. But when I do, I go, oh, that's better. And so the little things like that, or even maybe just, if you can, just buy yourself a little, a little treat of something. And it's about anything you do this month, that is for you particularly will affect you in a very positive way but it's like it'll just make you feel better it'll just turn things around in your mind especially if they've been very bleak and very hard and such a struggle it's like do these things and they will just turn that around for you uh, lift you out of it in some way and the more you do the more it'll lift you out um, the more you sit with yourself and just make sure your environment is warm, nurturing, you've got food, you've got everything there, um, you've got your phone there, you've got like just sitting in the chair where everything is within your reach so you don't have to get up and down and up and down and up and down um, all the time. But just that everything is there within your reach that has a certain kind of bliss about it, you know, especially if you've had a busy life, busy day, and there has been a lot of noise around you. Just having things at your fingertips, the ability to have noise if you want it, the ability to have song if you want it, you know, food, um, warmth, like everything right there, and you can just sit and be, be in your skin. Have you sat and thought about this is me, I am in my skin. Have you thought that? Have you done that? Have you allowed yourself to be you? Acknowledge self, acknowledge you, because it's important. Okay, so I will have another random card just before we finish. Um, let me see, what else for the month? So this month of July, we've come out of that whole whole tough stuff if you want to know it's improving it's improving it's improving so what else have we got for this month that could give us oh yes i've had these cards a few times i feel this year actually and it this one is the world so for those of you that know the cards you can look it up and you can put your own interpretation for yourself on it because yes this is general this is a theme, you know, uh, often we share uh, certain experiences uh, the same as other people and 
this is the same kind of experience. I read cards for you and they just share a general theme of uh, energies that are around, things that are going on. This is an empowering month for you as a, as a, as a person. It is an empowering, I matter, I count, I deserve, I am confident, I'm going to show what I can do, I'm going to be the best version of myself. And the world says, take a leap of faith, not literally, but step up. Step up your life in some way because it says your life is going to step up. It, a little bit of input from you, a little bit of sacrifice downtime from you, a little bit of validation of yourself to yourself, your world will open up. There will be opportunities for you to be engaged in that you can move forward with. These things are ready for you if you allow yourself to not be anxious uh, about the next step. The next step for the rest of the year, we've got at least July, it's all coming good. And it's a positive year, all in all. Yes, struggles for the year, successes as well for the year. A lot of you that have had your houses um, through the cyclone, I know a lot of you are still struggling to get work done, but it's starting. So there's that promise of, it, of success. It says it's better for the waiting. It's better for the waiting because it will turn out better than you thought. And you will appreciate it a whole lot more because you've waited for it and because you've wanted it and because maybe there were things you wanted to have that were slightly different uh, from your old place to your new place. It is, uh, for those of you that are looking for your um, home still, there is, uh, the words I got for your forever home, which means your permanent home being your next home being your permanent home and it says that this is possible and achievable there are just some little things you might have to participate in um, involve yourself in uh, do that you wouldn't have done before and a lot of you are manifesting already for your new place for your where next um, living situation dream it imagine it step through it Make like you're already on your way there. Even start packing a couple of boxes because that's a signal. These are all signals to the universe that you're ready. But you are ready for a big step up, a big step forward in your life, an upgrade in your life. You are ready. Uh, July says the door is open. Uh, what are you going to do? And on that note, lovely people, have a good day. This is Gail. You are with Radio Hawks Bay. And it has been my pleasure. If you want to contact me, it is 027 4166 545. This program was produced by and first broadcast on Radio Hawke's Bay, your community access media station. Thanks to New Zealand On Air for making this type of programming possible.